Coming up on Headphones Neil Reviews, Star Wars from a different point of view, notably the 11 live action films from a smuggler's point of view. So let's get started. A. V. N. It's Headphones Neil! review for the Star Wars saga, so this includes the prequels, original trilogy, sequel trilogy, and both, or as of um, February 2021, the two um, Star Wars stories, notably uh, Solo and Rogue One. So for this particular review, I wanted to approach my watching of the films, as I've been doing for the past couple of years now, um, from a slightly different perspective. So for example, I did the Force Powers review, a straight watch through of the story from beginning to end as far as um, story order goes. Um, so for this particular review, I wanted to watch the films from the perspective of the smugglers, and in this case, Han Solo. So I changed up the order a little bit, but wanted to kind of think of the story from... Han Solo's perspective and how the stories pan out as far as all of that goes. So what I did is I watched Solo, a Star Wars story first, then the prequels, um, Rogue One, the original trilogy, and then the sequels, and thought about how the story progresses as far as what happened with Han Solo, his rise through the um, chorus or the Corellia underworld into the um, smuggler's life and then how the uh, universe unfolds around him. So watching it in this order was overall an interesting experience for me just because I thought of it as normally we have the story as uh, Luke's coming of age is become, learning about the universe, becoming a Jedi, learning about the Jedi, uh, learning about his family, um, seeing about how uh, or, or us, us as a viewer is learning about what happened with Anakin and all of that, the falling out and the return of the Emperor and the sequels and all of that. But for this point of view, I, I wanted to see or think about it as far as how everything pans out with um, Han Solo. So when we see him in Solo, a Star Wars story, the Empire has already been in existence. He's been part of the Corellia underworld and he ends up joining with the Empire as a, as a means of escape but ends up rejoining that underworld in a grander scheme because even the underworld has a grander scheme in the Star Wars universe, notably with the Black Sun, the Huts, and all of that. So I will get the one um, issue I had with Solo, a Star Wars story, out of the way in that we didn't really get enough of him and how he fell out of favor with Jabba the Hutt and what happened on that big job that he was supposed to um, help pull. So I was kind of hoping that we would get that at the end of the story or um, kind of have the ending or the last third of the film be the middle of the the second third of the film and the last third be the job he pulls for Jabba or kind of pull, uh, you know, 10 years later or do that whole five to seven year increments of the film so we get his rise in the Corellia underworld, um, his escape and falling or rise through the criminal underworld like with Black Sun and Dryden Voss and then ultimately the falling out of favor with Jabba later on before we see him in A New Hope. But that's neither here nor there. Overall, for me, the movie was good just on the visual basis, but I kind of wanted more with the criminal underworld, kind of along the lines of um, Tales of the Bounty Hunter, I think the Star Wars novel was called, or something along those lines. Um, but from here, rather than, um, for example, watching A New Hope and then working backwards from the beginning, if we take Solo, a Star Wars story as the starting of the Star Wars saga and adventure, and then work backwards to the beginning of the fall of the Republic, or basically the Twilight of the Republic, to the rise of the Empire, then we kind of see um, Solo becomes kind of one of those things that becomes a rise as far as the rise of the criminal element, even though the Empire is doing as much as they can to normalize everything, take out the criminal element, take out the rebellion and all of that. 
And then with the birth of the rebellion, we have kind of the further rise of Han Solo because as Solo establish or the Solo film establishes, he is a good person, but he's trying to be a bad person. And ultimately, Chewie becomes his conscience and conscience, and he does the right things. So overall, that way for me works. And then with Han's rise in the rebellion, we have him um, becoming a uh, force for good and then because he's still out of his element he has trouble with uh, Ben Solo which leads us into the sequel trilogy but because he has people around him who are good it helps him keep him, them on track um, to do the right thing and they it kind of gets an all or I took a, a kind of acknowledgement when he's telling Leia that they after the loss of Ben to Snoke that they went back to the only thing they were ever good at so so Han Solo because he's been he spent a lot of his time um, smuggling he's had a lot more experience with that but it was hard to translate that skill into fatherhood so. Um, Basically, from there, the sequel is kind of the kind of what we see later in the solo film when he's talking to Kara that she knows he's a good person and he's and so Han is being pretending to be someone he's not. We kind of see that in Ben as well that Ben is pretending to be someone he's not because Snoke is influencing him, much like um, what's I forget the guy's name that was running the crew in solo, but he was being the bad influence on Han, but. That's also that also made him who he was. So we see that translated into Ben that the Skywalker history and lineage, lineage is what makes is a part of Ben and is kind of is the big influence. But he has his own control of what he's um, or his own destiny and future and all of that. So overall, that works. And for me, even though we didn't have so Han Solo in The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, we slowly see that transition into Ben for a few bits. And then we also see that in um, Poe, which I kind of wanted Poe's storyline um, on Kijimi to be explored a little more on in The Last Jedi. Um, just because the whole idea that he was... He transitioned into the role with the Rebellion after his smuggling time, or spy smuggling time, so I kind of wanted that, um, or even in when we um, meet him in The Rise of Skywalker, that he either be, he was either he's a part of Han's crew, or um, he was, um, that's why he didn't join the Rebellion, and it, the reason that uh, Leia and Holdo liked him was because of the how similar they, uh, how similar Poe and Han really are. So for me, that improves the Last Jedi, or that improves the Rise of Skywalker a little bit more. Just thinking of how Poe is a lot like Han, the cocky pilot, the spy, former spice runner, um, and things like that. So thinking even from that point of view, it the whole smuggler aspect makes the franchise that much more better in my opinion um but the one downside i will say for the film franchise no matter how you watch it is the unevenness of the sequels for me there was a lot in the force awakens and rise of skywalker with very little in um or the very little in the um Last Jedi that made it feel uneven because I, I kind of there was is on par as far as basic content um, with The Empire Strikes Back, but when you compare it to, for example, Attack of the Clones, there's a lot more that happens. So, granted, the rebellion and resist or sorry, the resistance was on the run, but if we move um, a little bit more of Poe's storyline into The Last Jedi and introduce his contacts as a former spice runner. Um, into The Last Jedi, it would have worked a little bit better than introducing or even keep the introduction of Canto Bite in the film, but um, make it so that the code breaker owed um, Poe a favor, and that's why um, Finn and Rose have to go after him or go get that code breaker. So, things like that kind of when you watch it in succession like that, things like that stand out a lot more so that's kind of what bummed me out watching it a little bit or watching it this time was 
the unevenness of the films. Um, granted, things did stand out, like the conversation between Luke and R2 and Luke and um, Yoda, but I kind of also wanted more... Uh, well, I mean, the Force training was okay. We got about the same... Or we got, you know, basic training with uh, Luke and Yoda and then um, Luke and Rey, but... I also kind of want, hope that they would have uh, moved a little bit more there just to keep the evenness of the films going. But it was too big for me, it was too big of a dip in The Last Jedi and make it um, a general recommendation. But that's neither here nor there. So overall, I want to say that the story does hold up though. So if you watch them in succession like I did, then it makes for a good story arc as far as Han's point of view of things that he's he rises to the galactic scale of. The smuggling um, scenario, or the smuggling scene in the Star Wars galaxy, and when you realize how the Empire came into power, and then um, the criminal uh, criminal elements that also rose, and then from there the Resistance's um, desire for peace and to overturn the Empire, and then the First Order makes for a very interesting storyline. Um, so overall my recommendation is it's a good um story arc to think of it just from the Han Solo perspective um so watching Solo then the prequels Rogue One original trilogy and the sequels also works and it makes it that much uh, sadder or no matter how you watch it it's uh makes it that much um sadder to have the loss of Han Solo which also makes made it more uh, compelling in my opinion that they had introduced more of Poe's backstory in the sequel trilogy to uh, make it or to put more emphasis behind Leia's and all those um, statements that they do like why they like him that he's a troublemaker he's a scoundrel and overall someone that they would like because we have more of his backstory rather than just having what I felt like it was a throwaway line. So that's all there is for this particular review. So um, if you have any comments, questions, feedback of your own, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website's PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, um, as you may have noticed, the, this episode is kicking off the new format of the show. So as a patron, you get um, information like that early, as well as um, posts with upcoming uh, content, what um, is scheduled or on the schedule list of stuff to review and watch and things like that. So be sure to check out the Patreon for all that extra content. Um, so, of course, if you have uh, feedback on the um, format as well, you can provide that as well by commenting on one of the patron posts um, DMing me on Twitter and all of that good stuff but thanks for tuning in and until next time